If you're looking for a short and quick solution, this video is not for you. Hey guys and welcome to my video and today we are going to try SilkyPix 00 Studio Pro against DxO Photolab and Canon DPP. And fully disclaimer, I personally use SilkyPix 00 Studio Pro but I'll promise you I won't be biased because I really kind of want to buy DxO. Now I need to find the reason and the whole video will be completely unscripted because I don't want to make any decision in advance before I make the video. So if I'm struggling, you will be struggling too. If you see me being happy, I promise you you'll be happy as well. I also am sure that there will be a moment that all the results will be equivalent to each other where I really want to find the best out of all, but probably not going to be possible. That being said, I remind you, this is going to be a long video. So sit back, drink a glass of water and let's get in. Now, DxO for the left 4 just came out not too long ago. So we are also going to see how D prime and prime compares to each other. And is there a big difference or not much? And yes, I'm using Canon DPP because I'll be using Canon camera. But those who are not using Canon camera and have Sony or Panasonic or Olympus, for example, uh, principle is the same. The idea is to see if a camera's own raw converter is more useful or equivalent to the pro paid version. So in order to do this test, I have followed some rule. The rule number one I followed, all the photos were taken with tripod to make sure that everything is very sharp, steady as a rock. When it comes to lenses, what I've done, I've taken about four or five photos so you'll see in the video. So two photos were taken with this lens right there, the Sigma 18 to 35. I love this lens. I want to see the performance of it without any lens correction by Canon DPP, which do not support any third party lenses, unfortunately. So you have to live with what your lens provides you or have to use something else after Canon DPP to do the sharpness. In DxO though, when it comes to ISO 100, the noise reduction, I used only HQ. I left prime and deep prime for ISO 6400 and 12800, which is the second maximum and the maximum limit of Canon 70D because welcome to 2020 and I'm still using the old camera. And SilkyPix Developer Studio Pro, I did the same thing. I have not touched anything else except for noise reduction only fine details mode for everything and for sharpness i kept it to the default i let the software decide what sharpness the particular picture should have i didn't also change any color i didn't change any white balance i didn't change any exposure even if any particular photos has any kind of overexpose or underexpose i didn't touch it at all my objective is to see the sharpness and noise reduction those two only and maybe i want to see the automatic distortion correction also as I said earlier, I'm going to keep everything to the minimum. Only change I'm going to make are noise reduction and sharpness. So in Canon DPP, at the bottom, everything remains zero. The picture profile is faithful. The sharpness, I added one, it used to be zero because unfortunately, Canon DPP do not support Sigma lenses. When it comes to the, when it comes to the noise reduction, where is it? There. The noise reduction, as you can clearly see, it's using its own algorithm. So ISO 100, there is almost no noise reduction applied. But if I click to 6400, it's using its own algorithm. I'm not going to change it. I'm going to leave it as it is because I would like to see and I'd like to show you how does it work and is it good enough and do we need to make any change if you use Canon DPP. Now, moving on to the DxO. In DxO, basically the same principle. So I'll be using the neutral color, as you can clearly see this one, which I already actually applied. Now, because my, with the Sigma, I have used ISO 100. So personally, I don't like to use any noise reduction if there are no noise, but I'm going to turn on HQ, but that's the as far as I'm going to go. I think using prime or deep prime for anything with the base ISO, it's a little overkill. As a matter of fact, you might lose details, which you don't want. Now, when it comes to the sharpness, the whole reason why you're going to pay money for your DxO photo lab is the lens sharpness, which is its own way. You can clearly see here in the box, if I turn off, it remains original as it is, but if you turn it on, it becomes really sharp, which is amazing. And now I'm going to turn on also distortion. So that's the only changes I'm going to make. I'm going to just use noise reduction, sharpening, and distortion. I'm going to turn off contrast. I'm going to turn off smart lightning. 
I don't want any work on this because sometimes the exposure or uh, color change might interpret sharpness and noise in a different way. So I'm going to turn all of them off. Same goes to white balance. Actually, I'm going to turn off the color accuration again. That's not the objective. Also, the white balance, I turn it off because it's going to stay as shot. Actually, I want to see what happens when I turn this on. Yep, no change, which is brilliant. Now, I would like you to see in this corner right there. Pay attention to this one. This is where the most brightest part. Now have a look on, okay, I'm going to go to the Sigma photos. And now pay attention here and DxO, pretty much identical. But in Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro, it seems a little bit brighter. I'm going to leave everything as it is. In Photolab, I'm only using the default sharpness, HQ for ISO 100, and I have two files with Canon 6400 and 12800. For those, I'll be individually using Prime and Deep Prime. And I will also turn on the less sharpness, Moir. In Silky Peaks, as I said, everything remains off. Color, this is the base base profile. So that means that my color colorometry will remain very, very neutral. Same goes to the white balance. White balance remains in camera settings. I'm not going to touch it at all. But when it comes to the noise reduction for ISO 100, or high ISO, I will keep it to fine detail, which is the newest version in Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro. I'm going to export all the photos and I'm going to show you the result in Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro. So I have exported everything and I'm going to go chronologically. At first, we're going to start with Sigma 18mm at ISO 100. So I have three export, starting with Silky Peaks here, then Canon DPP, then Photolab with HQ noise reduction. Right, so I'm going to open the first one, put that on the side. Now, on our on our right hand side, we have Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro, and on the left, I'm going to change the rest. So this one is the result of Canon DPP. Pay really good attention, the blue wall here is very different than Canon DPP. And remind you, I did not change anything. This is how the camera interpreted the color. What I found in Canon DPP that you don't have any choice of as shot. Only choice I had is auto, which is interesting. Now, I don't really mind. Uh, white balance is something that totally up to you. It depends on how you like your white balance result. The next one we have is Photolab with HQ. And interestingly, all three software rendered completely different color than each other. So again, on the right hand side, you have the Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro. On the left hand side, right now, you have the Canon DPP and now you have Photolab. And Photolab and DPP, they're almost close enough. But then again, you can also compare that to the Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro. So that's something to be mind of. Then again, I remind you, this is a test of sharpness and noise reduction. So I'm pretty sure that there are no noise in any of those because ISO 100, there's no way there's going to be any noise, but we're going to test it anyway. So I'm going to do 100% zoom right now. Right, again, on the right hand side and the left hand side. So right, Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro. Left, you have the Canon DPP. I don't know how the screen rendering in YouTube right now, but to me, Silky Peaks is really, really sharp. I personally like it. Now, let me remind you, Canon DPP do not support Sigma or any other third party lenses. So therefore, you should add a little bit of extra sharpness or you can export TIFF and use sharpness in Photoshop or any other sharpening software that you have. But Canon DPP do not provide any kind of lens correction for Sigma. So without any correction, Sigma actually a really good lens I can clearly sell, you can clearly see. Now, this is 200% magnificent. You have all the details, look at that. I mean, no one going to watch a photo at 200% zoom, but the result is magnificent, so sharp with the silky peak. Now, DxO, this is where my curiosity is. Where is the DxO? There you go, that's the one. And because DxO has two specialty. They provide probably the best sharpness in the market because of their database, and they have one of the best noise reduction with prime and deep prime. Sharpness, all, they're really close to each other. The biggest difference I see is the color. Honestly speaking, I'm really surprised. I don't know which one is right and which one is wrong. I would probably change it based on my own decision. 
but right now I'm kind of confused with the color though. That when, it's to, when it comes to sharp sharpness, the right hand side seems to be better than the left hand side. And when it comes to distortion, as expected, DPP did not provide any kind of distortion correction. So again, you have to manually adjust it. The difference between Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro and PhotoLab is not really significant, but they're really close enough. Let me show you. Now, this is Silky Peaks. Left and right, they're both actually silky peak. Now we're gonna go next to it, to DPP again. 18mm is a bit more distorted. And Photolab actually did do a pretty good job. I'm satisfied, it looks really less distorted, completely flat, brilliant. Now, the result at 18mm with Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro is the sharpest to me, followed by DxO, followed by DPP. Again, DPP do not provide any kind of lens correction, as expected. Now, we are moving on to Sigma 35mm at ISO 100. Let's do this. Now, this is Sigma 18 to 35mm at 35mm. Left and right, they're both same. So I'm going to keep as usual. So starting with the quickly distortion and color. Now, distortion at 35mm, Sigma has pinch distortion. So as expected, DPP did not correct anything. Silky Peaks did. And Photolab did amazing job. Now, sharpness, this is where I'm very curious. So I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. Let's say I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in about um, 50%. Let's start with 50, there you go. Now, on the right hand side, you have silky peaks. On the left, you have DxO Photolab with lens sharpness and distortion correction. And I haven't used any kind of other sharpness in any of the software. Again, Silky Peaks looks amazing to me and color is hugely different from each other. I still don't know why. I mean, I can understand Silky Peaks because that's the one that I use and it will not touch anything unless I move it. Silky Peaks is almost like Linux. If you turn everything off, it will turn everything off and you can start from the scratch. But Canon DPP and DxO tend to use their own kind of algorithm, somehow try to make a change even though you turn everything off. Which sometimes I like it, most of the time I don't. Sometimes I like it because sometimes I do forget things. But most of the time, it's kind of annoying because you do have an expectation but it doesn't do as you want it to do. Now, Canon DPP. To be honest with you, even after not using any kind of lens correction, the lens itself amazingly sharp that's why i really love this lens because you don't really need to worry about sharpness because by itself is already sharp however i'm curious about dxo and silky peaks now dxo in 100 percent i'm gonna turn it to 100 now let's look at the word who let let on the left let on the right the dogs out well personally in my eyes the silky peaks remains really sharp however i'm very surprised with the color render of each software as you can clearly see they have very big difference from each other. Look at the look at the silky peaks, look at the DPP, and look at the photo lab at HQ. I didn't touch anything. They did their own job on their own. But one thing I think I like to point out, this is very important and nothing to do with the sharpness. What I'd like to show you is this. Check this out. The wall here, the Canon DPP, the highlight fallout is fantastic. It's kind of muted. Let me zoom out a little bit. Check this out. It's really nice and mute. I like it where Silky Peaks remains kind of harsh. And Photo Life is also close to Canon DPP. But then again, as I said, I can get the same result in Silky Peaks if I make a change. In Silky Peaks, I turn everything off as I wanted to, where Canon DPP and DxO Photo Lab, even after turning everything off, it somehow did something, I'm sure about it, and hence the color and the highlight rendered very differently from each other. Well, that's up to you. Again, it's not a good thing or a bad thing, but at least you know that it's there. The Sigma 18mm and 35mm are exactly the same in terms of the sharpness when it comes to DxO and Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro. I find Silky Peaks really sharp, as you already saw in the video. With DPP, the Sigma lens is sharp too. Don't get me wrong, DxO and Silky Peaks used their own algorithm to make it more sharper, which is brilliant. We established the sharpness at the minimum ISO with Sigma. Now we're gonna move on to L lens. Now we are going to start with Canon L lens 7200 at ISO 100. This is the fair comparison, I believe, with Canon DPP, DxO, and Silky Peaks. Because in this time, you can actually take the advantage of DPP's own lens, lens correction. 
So I'm very curious about the result. Let's move in. Now, this time on the right hand side, I'm going to keep Canon DPP and I'm going to compare that with the rest. Now DxO, let's see what it does. DxO actually seems really sharp, really, really sharp. So does the Canon DPP. Actually, they're not really far from each other. I mean, look at the edges there from dark to the white shade and same goes to DxO photo lab. Again, color is really different from each other. Now, silky peaks, also sharp. In fact, really sharp. We're going to zoom in 100% now. Just to remind you, left hand side, you have the Canon DPP and the right hand side, you have silky peaks. Now, let's do 100% zoom. At 100%, they are Ah, I think they're both identical. Only difference I see, I think, is the contrast. Silky Peaks actually almost identical. I think it's only difference in the color. That's why it's playing with my eye. To me, I think they're both equally same. Now, I'm going to leave it to 100% and change it to DxO. Uh, look, again, seems to be identical to me. If you want to see a difference, you have to zoom in, I don't know, let's say 400% and then going to go to a one of the word. Let's stick with this 700. In 700, 500% zoom, you have the reference, the Canon L, DPP, and right now on the left hand side, you are looking at DxO. This is Silky Peaks, that's a DxO. Silky Peaks remains, to be honest, I think it's a tie guys, but if you're zooming out all the way, Silky Peaks to me, as sharp as Canon DPP and DxO, as you're looking at right now, on the left hand side, I put it in the third place because I think it's not as sharp as the rest of the two. But by any means, I don't mean to say that it's not sharp. They're all sharp, but Silky Peaks, to me, the sharpest, followed by Canon DPP, followed by DxO. Interestingly, with the Canon 70-200 at ISO 100, I was very happy to use Canon DPP because I could take advantage of their lens correction, which is fantastic. So as a result, they are very close to each other. Still, to me, I found Silky Peaks really sharp, followed by Canon DPP, and DxO, honestly, not too far. So again, none of them are bad. This, we are comparing between better and the best. This is going to be interesting because with the Silky Peaks, I have only one image with only one module. I used Silky Peaks fine detail with almost everything from 100 ISO to 12,800 ISO. And I did the same thing with the Canon DPP. Canon DPP, I kept the default, I let the software did its job. But with the DxO, I rendered HQ, DxO Prime, and DxO D Prime. Now, as a reference, I'm going to keep Silky Peaks on our right hand side all the time and going to compare the rest. Right now we are looking at comparison between Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro and DxO at, at HQ. Personally HQ did pretty good job at ISO 6400 even though we all know that they also have Prime and D Prime for the high ISO but I really like the result of it because it did protect the dark and the white shades and you can see the differences clearly. It's very nice, very pleasing to my eye. But Silky Peaks didn't do a bad job either. However, it seemed a little, a very little softer than DxO, which I believe is the result of the heavy noise reduction. And if I were you, I would probably turn it down. But here, I would like, I wanted to see how it interprets the 6400 and what it does by default. Now, we are moving to DxO Prime. Now, look, Silky Peak and DxO Prime are both almost identical. Only difference I, I see are the color because the Silky Peaks seems a little more into the blue side because I didn't touch the white balance where Photolab made it a bit more warm even though I didn't touch the white balance correction. And the detail, they look all right actually. They look slightly better than the Silky Peaks. But the best detail you have here is actually with HQ. Now, we are going to the Prime, uh, Deep Prime. This is the newest one. Now you're going to see, if you're curious about the Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro noise reduction and the DxO noise reduction with their newest Deep Prime, you're going to see the result right now. And you know what? I'm going to show you the original file quick, very quickly. So I'm going to go to my originals. There you go. Turn this one off. Now, this is the original 6400 file. 
look at that this is an ugly really ugly photo that's 6400 and that's 12800 so as you saw the result of the 6400 the original files really 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 grainy now what i'm going to do i'm going to bring back the silky peaks on the right there you go now this is the deep prime this is the time that you know that if, if it's really worth paying the upgrade for the deep prime surprisingly the deep prime managed to keep the details but is it very different than the prime let's see so this is prime right you have silky peaks and you're looking at the prime deep prime again prime and deep prime i should zoom back a little bit at 100 because anything zoomed more than that looks pretty ugly we all know so the prime managed to keep the black value intact and still quite soft i probably would tone it down a little bit and this is the deep prime uh, personally speaking i don't see a huge difference the artificial intelligence didn't do an extraordinary job comparing to the prime or comparing to silky Peaks developer studio pro to be honest with you i would probably get the similar result if i toned down the luminance uh, noise reduction a little bit i think this is too much by default and i would turn it down now how about canon dpp let's go for it this is canon dpp whoa okay it's grainy i think canon dpp kind of gives like one of those really beautiful fine grain look and to be honest with you when it comes to detail at 6400 canon managed to keep the most amount of detail among all period i can see perfectly everything seriously guys i would be happy using canon even if it's 6400 iso or even 12800 iso because come on this is i'm happy I mean, Canon DPP produced beautiful, pleasing eye. It made the ISO a bit more pleasing to the eye. So, which means, yes, you can clearly see the noise, but also they are not ugly whatsoever. And most importantly, every single details are there. You didn't lose any detail. It's fantastic. I'm gonna move around a little bit just for you. Have a look. So I'm going to refresh. On, our, on your right hand side, you have the Canon, you have the Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro. Now, right now, you're looking at the DxO Photo Lab with their HQ, not far from Canon, DPP. Managed to keep all the details. Then, you have the DxO Prime, not bad job. Honestly, not bad at all. Comparing with Silky Peaks, did a good job. DxO Prime, Deep Prime, not far from DxO Prime. Actually, you know what? I'm going to change between DxO Prime and DxO Deep Prime back and forth really quick and see if you see any differences. This is Deep Prime, Prime, Deep Prime, Prime, Deep Prime, Prime. I don't see any significant difference unless you are pixel pipping the hell out of the photograph, which most likely never gonna happen because let's face it, we are going to post our photo in websites or social media first before even printing. You're going to print it out. And if you really want to print your photograph, guys, I rather do noise reduction with Canon because Canon, even at 75% or hell, even 100%, I have all the details that I needed. The noise reduction seems pleasing to my eyes, doesn't look soft at all. And if you zoom out, it looks crunchy and sharp. I love it. Silky Peaks, on the other hand, looks natural. You can clearly see that it did use a heavy noise reduction but there are no significant loss of details that's a good thing but i would personally reduce the noise reduction quite a bit now moving on to iso 12800 with canon 70d this is the maximum of canon 70d i cannot afford a new camera and we all know that canon 70d already at 6400 is quite seriously bad for photograph so we're gonna push the limit now now, ladies and gentlemen, where are we? We are at the maximum ISO 12800. Okay, interestingly, because I learned something from while I was doing the test with 6400, what I did with Silky Peaks, I reduced the noise reduction just two stops. So from 75, I went down to 65. So on the right hand side, that's the result you're looking at now on the now this is silky peaks with the default so check this out as i said when we are looking at the silky peaks developer 6400 noise reduction when i reduced 
the noise reduction on the left right hand side I managed to re recover a lot of details while reducing the noise and on the left hand side that's the default one which is I found it a little too much so now you know if you use Cyclipix Developer Studio Pro I recommend you to reduce the noise reduction just uh, quite a notch and you are going to have a lot of uh, details. Now this is DxO Photo Lab with HQ. Nice, beautiful looking fine grain. I love it. You can see the noise reduction, but it doesn't look plasticky. It doesn't look weird. It looks natural to me. When you zoom out again, no sign of heavy noise reduction. Details are there. Photo looks nice. Everything looks natural to me. This is DxO Prime. So on the right hand side, again, Silky Pix Developer Studio Pro with fine details noise reduction mode with the reduced noise reduction and smoothness. On the left hand side you have DxO Prime except the color DxO with its yellow tone and Silky Pix with its bluish tone they both look identical to me. Although the dark lines look at this the dark it's darker with the DxO than the silky peaks. So there is a minor difference, I have to say. Now this is DxO Deep Prime with artificial intelligence, the newest technology with the DxO. What do you see? I see number one, again, not a huge difference between Prime and Deep Prime. Again, I'm going back and forth. This is Prime, this is Deep Prime. You may, may going to see a little bit difference when you are zooming in quite a bit. Again, you are looking at Prime, Pay good attention. This is DxO Prime on the left hand side. Silky Pix Developer Studio Pro on the right hand side with the reduced noise reduction. Look at the loose of details in this area. Here looks nice to me. Now we are going to look at DxO Deep Prime. I don't know about you. I don't see a huge difference between DxO Prime and Deep Prime. Maybe this is my eye because I've been looking at this screen for quite a long time and I should take a break. So if you see any other difference, please comment below and I would like to hear your opinion. Maybe in the YouTube, you might find different than what I'm talking about right now. Who knows? But at this very moment, first of all, I don't see big difference between Prime and Deep Prime. And Silky Peaks did good job, but it's not excellent. Now we're going to the Canon DPP. Now Canon DPP, the result going to be subjective. What I mean, either you can call it ugly, period, or you can call it film look grainy because Canon DPP managed to turn the digital noise into a fine looking grain and no way it looks bad to me. It's not an excellent photo, no, but it's not a bad photo. And Silky Peaks, still quite soft, which is expected from a camera with a high ISO. Their modern camera does better job at 12,800, but if you have significant amount of noise in your camera, prepare to lose detail a little bit. Even though DxO Prime and D Prime did not a bad job, to be honest with you. There you go. That's the Prime and that's the D Prime. Like D Prime, you still have a little bit of darker, this is a bit more darker, has more detail than the Prime, less softer, more detail. But uh, to be honest, none of them are bad. We are comparing between best and better. So to me, best one is DxO Prime, DxO Deep Prime, equivalent to DxO Prime. Canon DPP to me, pleasing. It has pleasing noise reduction. There are no lose of loss of detail. That's for sure. We can establish that Canon DPP did not lose any detail at all. It's contrasty, it's punchy, natural looking. Again. I would probably stick with Canon DPP and it's a free software. And those who are using uh, Nikon's own RAW converter or for Panasonic or Olympus, stick to those. They do better job than the third party, honestly. And the colors will be really the one that you probably wanted. Who knows? So starting from the beginning, we are starting with the Silky Pix render of 12,800 with the less noise reduction. This is the default noise reduction. I'm gonna move it to as a reference, this is DxO with the high quality or HQ noise reduction, DxO Prime, DxO Deep Prime, and DxO Prime, Deep Prime, and Silky Peaks, to me, not very far from each other. And this is Canon. Now, so just a reminder, Canon DPP do not support any native lenses, any third-party lenses. DxO 
do not support Fuji and Silky Peak supports everything. Uh, when, it's, when it comes to result, at the base ISO, every software gives you the best result. The difference comes down to the, at the highest ISO possible. So I don't see any bad software here. All I see, they are very different from each other. So it comes down to what do you prefer? And as you already saw in the video, the 6400 and ISO 12800, 12, I personally think the Canon DPP produce fantastic result. It's not technically clean, but it's really pleasing to my eye. I love it. So I'll be using Silky Peaks Double Pro Studio to do my noise reduction. However, if there are a moment, if I can use Canon DPP, I will use Canon DPP because I won't have any regret because of the result. Fantastic. So in the end, which one is better? Which one you should buy? The whole video is supposed to give you answer. The answer is one. If you have Canon DPP, you'll be happy with either Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro or the EXO. Problem, if you happen to have a colleague who has Fuji, and you want to edit on your own, you won't be able to edit it in DxO because they don't support it. So that's the downside. Where Silky Peaks supports almost everything, which is a good news. So you should be happy with Silky Peaks. So this is it. Boy, I spoke a lot. Ah, my head hurts. My voice hurts. I'm going to drink a glass of water. I'm going to edit this particular video that I just made. It's going to be a long edit. And then, and I hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Keep wearing a mask and bye-bye.